Well, hello, thank you for joining me today again on the Church History Trail. You're very welcome to the Chull. And where we are today is we're in Ballybean Estate, which is in Dundonald. And we're just walking down here to the Longstone area of the estate. And just yes, you've guessed it, we're going to see a long stone, or in other words, a standing stone. So I've got a question for you. What were these standing stones used for? What was their purpose? Now, some were probably used as domains, burial chambers, or portal tombs, in other words, which are a single chamber, a megalithic tomb. And uh, some would probably have been used also in religious observances or even uh, road markers but what would a single stone be used for and this one here is massive it's even bigger than the last one we videoed now some do have astrological alignment and some were part of stone circles, of course, such as Stonehenge in England. And they date mostly, the ranges go from 4000 BC to 1500 BC. And of course, the New Grange tomb near Dracula is one of the best examples of a passage tomb. And of course, the remains of over 1000 megalithic standing stone tombs can still actually be seen in, or still actually be seen on the island of Ireland and particularly here in the north and this is it here and it's quite incredible so uh, I came across this through watching uh, Joseph Kennaway's video on his Belfast City Mission Facebook page on Bolly Duff and so then I checked Tom McLean's page in the YouTube channel and he had actually recorded this as well and so here I am today recording it and you can see the beautiful floors there coming out and that's a good sign that we can spring is on the way so happy days but uh, this is it here unfortunately it's got a few cracks in it Some stones, of course, have carvings on them, while others, like this one and the one I did, did earlier in this one, um, have none. Of course, so, stone circles still remain an archaeological mystery in Britain and Ireland to this very day, as do some individual standing stones. But this is certainly a, a large one, there's no doubt about it. Now it's possible that some may have been used for memorial stones, such as the 12 tribes, 24 in total, that used the, uh, the, tw the 24 stones. Um, if you remember that Israel set up both in the water and on the land, so the 12 tribes, there was one stone for each, uh, each tribe, the 12 tribes, one stone in the water and one on the land. So that was set up to commemorate and remember how God dried up the river Jordan so that they could cross around 1400 BC. Also Jacob, if you remember, he used a, a stone as a pillow and uh, he was sleeping on that. And of course, he used that as a memorial pillar to commemorate God meeting with him in the place where he was. And that's known today as the Stone of Scone. Um, it's supposedly meant to be Jacob's pillow, but it's not. Um, but uh, that's another story. And certainly Gentile peoples worship stones, there's no doubt about that. They were worshipping them as idols. We can see that, for example, in Daniel 5 verse 4, where some of these stones, uh, some of these idols were actually stone. And also Israel ended up worshipping stones as well. We see that in Jeremiah 2, verses 26 to 28, saying to a tree, you are my father, and to a stone, you give birth to me. So if you live in the area here, and you know exactly what this stone 
was used for and why it's here then why don't you leave me a wee comment and that would be great to hear from you so there you go that's Ballybean Standing Stone here in the Longstone area of the estate so thanks for watching and god bless